Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to color some stained glass today with what I call circumferential coloring. It sounds really fancy, but it's typically the kind of coloring a lot of people do already. So you can now give it a fancy name, and you can say Sandy gave it the name and sound really smart. So what I'm coloring is this stamp from Dailard Expressions. There are two stamps in this set plus a couple of sentiments, and the two main coloring stamps are in this same church window shape. And I'll show you the other stamp at the end of this video so you can see what both of them look like. They're both a lot of fun to color. And what I did was choose a couple colors and I'm blocking in where I want those colors to be. The reason I'm blocking them in is because it's real easy when you're coloring something like this to end up with two blocks of yellow next to each other, two blocks of blue next to each other if you don't plan it out. And I had to start this video over because I messed up. So what I'd recommend is stamp one on some scratch paper first and just kind of throw in some color to get your plan set before you start your real coloring. Because you don't want to end up getting to the end and going, oh man, I totally screwed up. I also recommend doing just this base layer first because that's what I'm doing here. I'm just keeping it as basic and simple as I can. I'm not worried about blending and making all those little lines go away because I just want to block in the color. I'm going to add a lot more ink to this. There is that little spot right in between those stars. You can see I put a little purple on one half because the line wasn't continued on the stamp. And uh, just going to fill in the colors. Now, if you have other stamps that are simple-ish kind of scenes and you could draw some lines, say, through the sky like this, you could turn another stamp into a stained glass looking kind of stamp. So there's a lot of things you can do without getting this stamp, but it is so beautiful and really simple. And I ended up actually hand fussy cutting out the shape to put on the cards that you'll see at the end because it was such a simple shape. So you don't even need a die to go with it. So I'm blocking in the colors and I've picked out a couple of jewel tone type of colors. I'm keeping my palette fairly limited. And one place that you might want to go to pick some colors and get some real basic uh, blending colors to go with them, on my website, I have a whole page dedicated to Copic blending groups. And you could go there and choose some blending groups, get them all set out on your counter and choose them in, in a rotation to try to cover the entire image first with those colors. The windows I'm going to leave with one layer of yellow eventually, so I'm just not coloring them right now so I don't end up with too much ink in there. Now for circumferential coloring, what I'm going to do is go around the outside edge with my darkest color. You could do this with two colors. I'm going to do it with three on most of these, but you color around the edge with just a line. And the reason that I call it circumferential rather than just shading from the outside in, is that there are some images where you have enough room to do small flicks, and that's gonna give you a little bit more room to work with. But there's some stamps, or some of these sections, you, you can see here, I would never have room to flick in most of these areas. So I'm going around the circumference of each shape, and it's gonna give me my shadows around the outside edges. With stained glass, this is actually really good for it rather than trying to do flicking and have a highlight and shadow area and that sort of thing. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit here so we can keep moving and you can start to see how some of this develops. I'm going in with my mid-tone color around a little further into the image so that I get a second layer of color just building toward the center. And this is just something you'll repeat throughout the whole entire process. And I'm putting a lot of ink down. Don't be skimpy with the ink. You need a lot of ink to make this blend really nicely. So now I'm going to take my lightest color. Of course, Y17. Why wouldn't it be Y17 that I do this with? My favorite color. And I'm just scribbling over top of the whole thing. And you can see how it starts blending in those colors that are around that outside edge. And it gives it that stained glass burnt edge look. Because if you actually look at them, I took a trip to Europe uh, a while back and I looked at a lot of stained glass. And it, it's kind of darker a lot of times around the side. It's generally from dirt that's collected there. And if they wipe the stained glass, if they clean it, they're generally cleaning the center sections. So you end up with more light coming through the middle. So this technique allows you to get that dark shading around the outside edge and still get some really beautiful coloring along the way as well. 
Now in large sections like this, I have a room, a little bit of room to do some flicking, not a lot, and I'm not gonna really fuss with it too much, but I have more room to work with it. I don't have to go just in one single little line. And this particular stamp and the other one in this set have sections that are really tiny and they have sections that are larger. But then I'm just gonna take that light color again, the same color I used for the base tone, and just scribble over the whole thing. And if you put enough ink in there, you'll generally get a pretty decent, even blend across all of it. And it hides the fact that that first layer wasn't all that perfect. Now with purples, I'll just give you the warning. V09 is the dark purple I'm using. It's a really dark purple. There isn't one that's like, I want one that's one step down from that. If you go to the V1s, you can find a V17. It's dark, but it's also a little bluer than this. And I really wish that there was just something that was a little bit better than this. The, they just skip over some shades that I would like in the Copic system, unfortunately. So I'm using V09, but some people will find that's really dark for them. So feel free to do whatever you'd like. This V15 is less intense and less blue than that V17, but it, it'll work good enough for this. So that's all good, right? And be sure to check that Copic Blending Groups page to find some groups that you may not have thought about using before. It has basically a full rainbow of colors and a three color collection for each one of them. Plus I list some of my favorite skin tone colors, my favorite animal and hair colors. So you can pick up a lot of information from that. And I will put a link, if I remember that, I'll put a link in the doobly-doo straight to that page. And I'll also try to put it on the blog post. And hopefully you remember that if you go to my blog post, you can always pin the card pictures. Uh, some people like to pin the video, but you can also pin the card picture so you can get the stamp and go back and refer to that again in your Pinterest and have an idea of how to do the coloring. And since I have both of these done, you can also see kind of a good color rotation if you don't want to do the math to figure out, okay, I want to put this one opposite that one and do this in that rotation because it did take me a couple tries to get this right. My earlier ones did not come out as balanced. I ended up with, uh, in some areas, a little bit more blue-green sections next to blue-green sections, and that didn't space the colors out nearly well enough for me. So you're welcome to do that. And now I'm gonna finish my BGs and blend out a little bit of that BG. Now the BG13 is the color I'm using in the center and I'm only doing two colors for this. You could use a third one and it's not working as well. And it, it's not giving me that strong contrast but I didn't worry about it too much because I still liked how it looked. I still have that overall effect. So even if you don't end up using three colors, it works fairly well to even use just two for that. And scribble all that color in there. And you could even scribble outside of it if you're going to trim it out like I did. So I've popped the window as well as a white panel on which I stamped the sentiment. I love the font in this sentiment. And then I also did a little purple coloring along the edge of the card base. That gives a little tie-in from the card base to the actual image and gives me a just a, a different look for the card. Here's the other stamp in the set, which is beautiful as well. And this one was a little harder to figure out the color rotation, so feel free to pin that one from my blog so that you can follow along. I also added a few extra sections in this one on the round circle around the, uh, the candle because it didn't have enough lines for me in there. Alrighty, so here are a couple other videos if you'd like to see some more Copic coloring because that's always fun, right? And if you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. You can click for more on the blog and all the supplies for this are listed in the doobly-doo as well as over on the blog as they always are. And I will see you guys next time. Hope you have a great day. Go out and color something beautiful and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.